opening rounds and indeed the LCS. Well, Lee Sin comes out as the first band champion from Giants. And Syndra, same thing we saw from the first game by Millennium. Yeah, the question is, will we see more mid lane bands? Will we see a TF band away? There is another mid lane band. Yeah, Jace comes out here. Will be aimed at Ryu, of course. Maybe even Kevin if he decides to take up into the top lane. Nah will be the safe red side banner from Millennium. Not showing any cards here. I wonder whether they'll ban out uh, something like an Aurelia as their last ban. Uh, I wonder what Giants are going to play from that as well and what they're going to pick because there's a lot of options available and I, I think they're not going to want to give Create and Corky either. So Giants could look to potentially first pick Corky, but there is still a lot on the table. Oh, hey, there's the Aurelia from Giants as their final ban out here. Now waiting for Millennium to bring out the Jarvan ban aimed at Frederick. So won't be having this one that game either. So, Javan not being available, Lee Sin not being available, that means we're in store for some Kha'Zix. Rengar potentially Elise again from the jungle. So, a bit of a different game this time around. We've seen Javan so much all day. But, what is going to be the pick? Ooh! First pick will be Fresh, coming in from Giants, so aiming at, at the support player. And that was banned out in the last game. Rydal didn't get his hands on Thresh, and we know that Rydal likes his uh, met, well, you know, heavy engaged supports, anything that can get up close and personal in the lane. So that is not too much of a surprise. Just the question now is what does Jerry play into it? Would kind of expect something like a Nami maybe to come out here, but Millennium pick up their first two champions. Well, we see one of those picks that will be in the bot lane up against uh, that Fresh, and it will be Corky coming in here from Millennium, that of course going to Creatin. And then Haro will be taking away the Kha'Zix for the jungle. I'm honestly quite surprised that they let Kevin, uh, let Creatin get the Corky here, because Creatin finished that game something like uh, 7 1 and 6, or at one point late into the game, he, he'd only died once and had a massive number of kills. So the fact that Giants are willing to give that away, are they going to pick the Jinx into it again? Will they try a Sivir or a Graves? Will they default to the Lucian we have seen all so much? With Thresh, there's a lot of options available. Yeah, I mean, they went with Jinx last time and it didn't do badly, mm. but uh, maybe they will default to that Lucian that we have been seeing time and time again in that bot lane. Well, hey, there's the Elise again from Frederick. That will be into the jungle. And then X Pepperino, what does he decide to take? Well, here's the Jinx, so looking very similar to last game. Yeah, very similar setup indeed. But the question is now, can they get Jinx rolling a little bit more this game than they did? Obviously, the catch potential with Thresh, pair that with Elise, is very strong. But there's some more team fight coming out on the side of Millennium. Well, that answers your question to what's going to go up against a Thresh in the bottom lane. It will be Nami now coming in for J. Ree. But, yep, in the top lane, you just mentioned it, the team fight presence will be the Rumble. And I wonder what they're going to pick here. Aurelia not available, Nah not available. Do we see... A Cassid in here potentially into Rumble would be one option. What about the other uh, aggressive top laners? Because they don't want to pick up Maokai here. Maokai into Rumble would pretty much be suicide. So other options, Lissandra, Victor. I've been talking about them a lot, but we haven't actually seen them here. And it looks like people are a little bit afraid, uh, perhaps, to pick them in such an important game. But Giants have two solo lanes still to decide on. Yeah, I mean... At this point, though, you're one game down and one game away from elimination. Why not bring out this pick? Even if you're not 100% it can work, it's a curveball. It's something you can maybe throw into the mix. And Millennium will have to think a little bit differently of how Ooh. to deal with it. But looks like Giants are going the other way. They'll be taking the Zerf for the mid lane for Pepperino and the Jax for top lane. So our second Jax of the day really does pull into question how Jax expects to survive the laning phase, but what it will give them is a very good and very scary late game as well. Jinx, Jax are going to be able to push turrets. The question is, can they get there past the heavy team fight that Millennium have? Well, Millennium did just answer with the Ari as their final lock in here, Stress. So that will be what they're looking for here. They do have that rumble, which worked wonders in those team fights. And now they have the Kha'Zix coming in here. So a little bit more damage coming yeah. out of the jungle. So essentially in this kind of setup, Ari picks one off the equalizer, either cuts away the rest of the team or just deals massive amounts of damage and allows Kha'Zix to just pick up the resets. From there, Millennium should have a very cut and dry team fight, uh, you know, whenever they find the engages. Over on the other side, Giants did lock in a Zerath which in this composition, you look at it, there's a lot of single target, at least single target. Zareth is good at not only clearing out any kind of siege potential, but obviously has a single target stun. So Giants are looking to play pick again. 
Yeah, and we weren't really expecting anything different from them. No. But here we have it in the picks again. Millennium this time around, a little bit different. It's not quite all in on picks. If we don't get picks, then we're done for. It's a little bit of team fight here. So not as concerning, I think, as well for definitely that storyline that we were looking at. But either way, be interesting to see how these teams go up against each other because it's not all about the picks. It's about the execution. And in that last game, honestly, it wasn't just the picks that were playing the major factor in the whole game. It was the decision making. And honestly, whoever's doing the shot calling from either team is pretty much sublime. Either way, that was a fast loading screen. We are getting <laughs> right onto the rift, ladies and gentlemen, with our second game of this best of three. Let's see if Millennium can take this to the 2 0 sweep or Giants can cling on for dear life as they swap up to the blue side in this game? Oh, that is the big question, but I think Giants made this perhaps a little tougher than it should be. Uh, the Picks and Bands phase has really put Whirly B up against it now, and Jax isn't exactly known for his strong laning phase, and well, his Counter-Strike isn't going to do too much against Kevin in lane either, so will we see Giants look for some kind of swap up? I mean, really, B's on a champion that really is going to get pushed further and further back in this laning phase. Oh, now we're sitting in this mid lane. Not too much is happening. Giants are not trying to pull the same shenanigans they were last time around, or are they? Because Rydal sitting here and now has a hook this time around. Ryu strays a little bit too far to the side, finds himself Rydal. Here comes the hook, will force out the flash. Nice beginning to the game for Giants. Great beginning to the game as well. That cost them really nothing. Too early in the game to get anything else down, and Ryu does not have his flash. That is going to be a big, big difference. We already know this is going to be a very similar game to, le uh, to game one when you look at where Frederick is going to go. He's coming mid lane, and if ever he needed a target, Ryu's first three minutes of this game is going to be very, very tough. Yeah, I feel like Ryu will be coming very friendly and familiar with his own tower uh, yes. within hugging distance. So that will be opening up for the early laning phase for him. Ooh, hook oh, hook in the bottom. Hook onto Jerry. He goes fishing, finds himself Nami. He'll be doing too much damage, and Jerry will laugh it off. Yep, just going to sustain up. But the question here is, do we see something a little bit obscure out of Frederick? Do we see red buff into ganking middle lane? Because Ryu may not be expecting it and he did just push the wave as well. So, if they've read this, they may be able to catch Ryu out very early on. Will they be able to mind game him here? That is the question. Frederick starts off his red buff. We'll be taking this away, taking a little bit longer, but top lane. Spoke about this before. Kevin on the rumble last game had some pretty nice equalizers. Trying to repeat that in this game, up against the Jacks this time around. You have to feel like Kevin is going to have the better laning phase here, and I honestly struggle to see why Willie B picked a Jax and then wants to one v one a rumble. And Frederick is going aggressive. Is he going mid lane? Yes, this is that one buff gank. Here's the level two gank. Pepperino gets charmed, but he'll follow the damage. Frederick does land the auto attack, but not much else. Did want the cocoon, but didn't have that skilled up. So Ryu will take a trip back to base. But now Ryu has no summoners. He's forced out of lane, and you can see uh, Pepperino and Frederick are going to shove this into their turret. And this is a big cannon wave that is not going to be there for Ryu in lane. So, Giants, once again, this middle lane is going very well for them early on. Yeah, this is going their way, but if history repeats itself, then that, in the grand scheme of things, actually doesn't matter. However, they need to make it matter in this game. They do. Ryu actually stuck around, so uh, just to use his health potions there. So, not quite wasted, but take a look. On his way up to top lane, Horo did just get so seen by a ward, so... Really, B's going to back away, but Haro is struggling in this series to get some impact in the early game, you have to feel. Yeah, and he swapped up the Kha'Zix this time around, so maybe he's just hoping, hey, hey, if I don't get anything done in the early game, maybe I'll pick up a couple kills here and there, be relevant in those team fights. But who is relevant right now is his counterpart of Frederick in the top lane, now looking for this gank. Has double buffs, did eventually get around to doing that, and just finding his time to strike onto Kevin. On that initial gank, you could see that Haro knew it was a possibility as well. So Haro has read uh, has read Frederick very well in this game. 
Haro also, I don't believe, just got seen. So he's up in this top lane for the counter gank here as well. So Kevin is going to play aggressive. I think they know Frederick's here. Here comes the two versus two. Counter Strike lands onto Haro, who will be jumping away. Frederick sinks his fangs into Karzix as he escapes from this fight. Repel comes up. Frederick does not decide to follow through onto Rumble. Haro comes off a little bit worse from that one. Were any summoners used in that engage? No, none really at all. So it's a bit of a stalemate, but the roam up from Beberino, a little bit oddly timed. Yeah, you uh, you cannot stun towers, and <laughs> there was not a rumble there either. So Hans wasted a little, little bit of time. Ryu will take this opportunity to take a trip down to bottom lane, see if he can have more success than his other middle laner of Zeref. Here comes the hook. Doesn't land onto Corky, but now they have to go into full retreat. Oh, he actually oh, drags them into the charm. Ryder will be the one receiving that one. But here comes the teleport now from Jax. Will he be jumped forwards into the counter strike? It will be enough to disengage, but he has to burn that summoner and he's out of position of his top lane. A lot used by bottom lane there for Giants. They use so much, in fact. Two flashes and the ignite, but good teleport usage by Whirly B knew that really he couldn't have got too much done in his lane right there. So Frederick is going to cover for him on that one. He manages to keep their bottom lane hopes alive because that could have been very dangerous for Adrian Rydal. So now Haro heads into his opposing jungler into his rave camp. We'll be taking this one onto his side. Now in the mid lane, Pepperino hasn't used any of his summoners just yet. We'll be heading back to base. He's not level six yet either, but you have to expect when these two mid laners hit level six, maybe see something a little bit more explosive in these lanes. We may, may very well do so, but their roams kind of made sure they hit level six a little bit later than you would expect. But here's Frederick back into the lane. He's going to cross a ward though, I think. Yeah, uh, he's standing yeah. on it. He was just <laughs> off the screen. Yeah, didn't pass by one. He's on top of one. So Haro on the other side was there just in case Frederick decided to go in. Places down yet another ward. Rhino roams down from the bottom lane, takes away this pink ward. You can't be that aggressive six minutes into the game. I will be taking this pink ward out of my jungle. Frederick hasn't actually backed yet. Uh, so he's sat on a fair amount of gold, and at that point, He's really not getting any sustain. He's also not able to farm up his jungle quite as much as Haro would. So Frederick does need some time here in between his ganks to actually get himself sorted when it comes to items. Jerry. Oh, Acre Prison onto Rydal. Here comes Creatin with the Valkyrie. Follow up onto this fresh and tries to find an escape route, but he doesn't have flash. He will be trapped in here. A fish <laughs> in a barrel. First blood goes to Ryu. They aggroed the dragon even <laughs> to just let the dragon get the kill, but Pepperino is out of mana that can't really follow up. But that was just Rydal walking through an area that they didn't have warded out. Good play out of Millennium, just setting up that trap. Yeah, very nice. Knew he was roaming away and it just encapsulated him in that dragon pit. One and zero, good start to the game. Millennium, 1,000 gold ahead so far. Again, we see Kevin with a slight CS advantage in the top lane. This time around, actually Ryu has an advantage over Pepperino in that middle lane. The only lane that's not going Millennium's way is uh, bot lane with Adri actually with only a very small CS advantage. But Jinx got forced back to pick up a pickaxe and it really would have liked to have backed for a BF sword to really output the damage in that bottom lane. Whereas Creighton with the Sheen is going to have a lot of burst damage. So. Watch for those bottom lane engages. Also, Kevin has his teleport and equalizer available. So, if Millennium can really spot this out, which they have a ward on it anyway, so Giants haven't swept this. This could be a big fight. Here comes the Aka Prison. Here comes the equalizer. This is not good at all for Giants. Frederick is dropping low. He can't even one versus one the dragon. And that will be Rumble taking not only the dragon, but also Elisa's life. Now here comes Ryu, takes up the second kill. Only just came back from base. Get put down again. 2 and 0, Adri is under attack from Kevin, and Pepperino does use the last ounce of his mana to get the stun down, but it may still not be enough, as the Flame Chompers does come out <laughs> and actually pins down both of them. Horro is hungry. Uh, here comes the right of the Arcane, but he's slightly out of range. It will actually be after Jerry instead. We'll be taking him out, a one for one, but actually another kill before, so a two for one for Millennium plus the Dragon. Yeah, they got the Dragon with Flame Spitters, and Kevin is doing so much in this game already, and Willy B is going to push that top lane, but the Equalizer in that fight, plus getting the Dragon from Kevin, 
just went so far. Frederick charmed in the middle lane, but not going to result in a kill. Yeah, he's all right for now, but guys have gone back to base. Middle lane, Ryu picked up the measly large rod. A lot of gold sunk into that item. 64 farm as well. He's in a good place for the early game. And Haro waiting for Frederick to come in, but that was red like a buck. And the cocoon will hit him in the face. Yes, indeed. Now, let's take a look at bottom lane items because Jinx has gone from the pickaxe into a zeal. So this is kind of what we saw out of Tristana's when you're not really doing too well in the laning phase. You pick up that pickaxe for damage, then build towards a static shiv, which is going to give you that attack speed spike, which Jinx is going to rely on. So wanting to compensate for this uh, laning phase that hasn't really gone their way. Yeah, that is what they're trying to do right now. 3,000 gold now going to Millennium. A lot bigger of a difference from the first game. Frederick is uh, flashing up red. <laughs> that golems. was actually his battle to the death with the golems. And he did come out on top. Winner. <laughs> he did. Yeah. Um, those low health things always get me. Yeah, I'm so used white. to observing that I'm just like tapping buttons. <laughs> Nothing's actually What's happening? happening? Right now. Exactly. But anyway. Top lane, what's happening is Horro and Kevin are waiting for Whirly B to push out. Is it actually going to happen, though? I think the jig is up. Or is it? Well, with Ryu moving from the middle lane, perhaps. There comes the pink ward behind him, so he'll have the early alarm system, but will it be enough? He has to make the split-second decision to back away from the turret. He will do so. Minion line happens to be there, and he'll be leap-striking over to his minion line. Yep, yeah, but the turret looks like it's going to fall here. That's a large wave up in the top side of the map. And Frederick is around, but 2v3, they don't really want to take this one, especially with Rumble having Equalizer still available. So there is a lot of action in the bottom lane at the same time. Kind of an odd duo down here, but ooh, Hook did not land. Not quite, but the top lane, that tower will definitely be falling. Two and one in the towers currently. Haro as well, aggressing into here. Frederick as well, trying to respond. And we'll see what they have in store. So far, Giants are taking a very slow start to this game. Definitely not picking the same momentum they had of the first game. We'll see if they can come back into this one a little bit stronger. Adrian Rydal will be taking the Golems. Good first step. So the question is, when is this game going to bubble over to a breaking point right now? And Ryu is going very aggressively. Oh, ward. Nice ward placement by Rydal. No, you could get that in the bush. But actually, didn't go in the bush. Yeah, Frederick, though, has caught Ryu and actually pins him down. Right, the arcane flashed away. Oh, it. and the ultimate caught in the, uh, in the dash takes him down regardless. So a nice one for zero. And Ryu burns a lot to get away. I just double checked that ward. It not in the bush. Not in the bush. It looked like it was. Wow. But anyway, there we go. Singing praises. Wasn't actually the case. Well, it looked like it. It looked like <laughs> it. Well, it's, uh, that's half of the battle. But Horro in the mid lane. Comes in for the gang onto Pepperino and Frederick. That was a great equalizer cutting off their escape route. Whirly Beedo comes in. And that's a one and zero. He was not able to follow up. That being from Kevin. And a good initiation turns sour very quickly. Now Whirly B and Frederick have been caught out from a bot lane roam from Jerry. F comes in from the ebb and flow. A 1 and 0 though. Advantage to Giants. Millennium making a couple of uh, solo errors there. I mean Ryu was pushing into the jungle. That time Horro pushed uh, just into an engagement 1 versus 2 and really couldn't follow up. So Giants are going to maybe take a turret. I think no. Jinx is going to have to back away from this because the poke is going to clear the minions out too quickly from Corky, but we're 13 minutes into this game. Millennium this time have a lead. They do, and with that lead, there's the Deathfire Grass picked up a 13 minutes pretty fast into this game, plus the uh, Spirit of the Elder Lizard into the jungle. That's a big item spike very early on into the game, and Millennium will drive this one home with Dragon spawning in 40 seconds. Or at least they should do. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> Trinity Force as well. Yeah, that, there is a bit, another big spike. So, Trinity Force for this Dragon fight is going to go a long, long way. But over on the other side, Jinx has picked up a Static Shift. That's going to make maybe kind of offset a little bit of that difference between the two. The problem is, how do you deal with that Corky Burst damage? Maybe the answer is a 3 0 0 Zerath right now, because Pepperino is having a good game again. You have to feel like a lot of Giant's hopes are 
put on his shoulders. They are, and we'll see if he has the back strength to do so. As Dragon is spawning in five seconds, we will have the first interaction between these two teams. Unless Millennium suddenly decide they don't want Dragon, the first Dragon of the game. Three and zero right now in the mid lane. Pepperino is having the best start of his life, but maybe not anymore. Equalizer comes down. Will he be in Frederick are completely caught out? Frederick will be falling here again. Repels up, but already dead before he lands. Another one for zero, down goes the jungler, and that should be the dragon going down as well for Millennium. Jinx wasn't even there during that engagement, so this is going to be the second of the game. I believe Millennium will uh, be taking this as long as they don't mess up a smite here, but Millennium may even have Giants cornered here because Giants are trying to rush down that mid turret and they're having to disengage very quickly. Well, Pepperino took the Fresh Express and he will get away from them. Millennium weren't quite able to catch up, but they'll take that kill and they'll take that dragon. They will. So where does that put us with regards to the gold lead? Nearly 4,000 is the lead currently for Millennium, and you have to feel this is their time in the game really to shine. We've got the penetration here from Haunting Guys and Sorcerer Shoes on Kevin. Trinity Force was completed before that fight as well. So there's a lot going Millennium's way on the itemization. And in terms of the vision, both the teams are at it again. 15 minutes into the game, Millennium, all of those red trinkets and the blue trinket are on top for Creatine. And Giants this time lagging behind despite the vision control. Definitely very back and forth, but Millennium definitely showing their cards for the next couple of minutes and what they want to achieve with their objectives. Giants want to achieve a bottom lane tower with their objectives, and this time they're going to get it. They are. That falls over for Adri in the bottom lane. And Millennium will be again controlling those wards, takes away that pink ward with the assistance of his jungler and mid lane. Jay Ru will clear wards all day up and down this river. Millennium is starting to question what they should do next, though. And you can see it, by the way, they're kind of just running around mid lane because they don't feel strong enough to siege an inner tower. And there's no dragon to fight over, but Giants are making a very odd play here. They're hoping that Creatin just pushes out here, which actually. He is going to do. So this could come up trumps, unless he checks. You missed. Hit the minion, but didn't hit the corky. That's what they wanted, but did indeed check. He knew something was up with everyone being off the map. Good read from Creatin. Won't be taken down today. Still 3,000 gold ahead on Millennium. They are definitely in control of this game. They're just kind of floundering on what to do with their advantage. Not as decisive as, uh, decisive as last game, but I guess the objective for what they want to go for is not as clear as last game. Yeah, it really isn't. And uh, Millennium are going to need a pick here, which I feel was said a lot in last season of LCS. <laughs> Indeed. And that's what they're trying to set up for. Ryu is waiting over the wall. But the ebb and flow actually gives the game away because they saw Nami cast it, so they knew somebody was there. But Millennium needs something to expand their lead right now because there's not a lot they can do just pushing in and trying to brute force things because there is a fair amount of wave clear here on the Giants lineup. We already mentioned the item spikes for Millennium, but they don't really have anything to fight over to force a fight to make something happen. Creatin in the bottom lane knows that the pace of the game has slowed and will just continue farming. He's still ahead of his counterpart of Jinx. In fact, is now ahead of his counterpart of Jinx. That was a different story from, say, 10 minutes ago, but not by a huge amount. Largely those bigger objectives like Dragon. However, the advantage has meant that Millennium have pushed into this jungle and placed down a bunch of wards. So they are strangling them in terms of the map control. They just need to do something with it. Yeah, they need to uh, use that map control that they have. There is pretty much full vision of lower side jungle on Giant's side. So Millennium know exactly where Giants are right now, but they just don't really seem confident enough to push anywhere. So it's going to be a waiting game up until the next dragon spawning. And at this point, it's Giant's game to clear out their own jungle. So they need a couple more sweepers and they need more pink wards as well. But they're getting there. Indeed they are. Creatin just... Uh Converted a chunk of change into a BS sword on top of his Trinity Force before 20 minutes. And to contrast, uh, contrast that to last game, we saw an Irelia pick up a Trinity Force at around 17 minutes. This Corky had one at 13 minutes and then has m even more gold on top of that. So definitely ahead of the curve. We haven't really seen it in action though, and that's what we need to see. 1 minute 40 
on the Dragon. That may be the next point of contention. So another thing we haven't really seen in action too much is Whirly B's Jax, and there you see him in the mid lane. He has not yet reached the point that Jax really becomes effective. So normally when you have a Trinity Force, that would be your, your big spike of damage. But on Jax, it's the second item. When you get the Blade of the Ruined King, that you really start having enough damage because you need the attack speed to go with Jax's kit. Get those powers out often. But at this point in the game, it is still just buy time for Whirly B to become a late game monster because that's what we saw out of JWoww earlier. Oh, Haro has been caught. Will be dragged back into his team. Ah, oh, Super Mega Death Rocket from the bot lane. Adri picks up the kill. And not quite in time for the Dragon, but they'll take the 1 and 0 regardless. They will. That was really nice global uh, ultimate usage there from Giants. They got the hook and from two different sides of the map, convert that into a kill, and they're going to get a turret from it. So this could be Giants' uh, platform to build their way back into this game. Yep, definitely equalizing that gold total here. Only 1,000 gold behind now. 30 seconds before the Dragon spawned. Haro has just spawned himself from the base of the red side. And these teams, they were fighting over Vision just before, and no doubt they'll return to that as, uh, as Haro will get back to his team. 5-4 to four currently in kills, 2-3 to three in turrets, so Giants are now leading with that last turret going down in the mid lane. But this game, all still to play for. Giants didn't have the exact timer, I don't believe. So they went there about 20 seconds early, and now it's going to spawn, and they're not in position. Millennium have spotted them out on a couple of remaining wards, so from having that good team fight, they now end up in a situation where Millennium have started the Dragon already and have it to half health. He's going down very quickly. Frederick from the side, can he pull off this steal? Bridal as well, throws out the hook, but there comes the bubble. That will be the Dragon going down to Elise though. Frederick takes that one away, and now they chased him down. Horror was also taken out in that action. That could not have gone any worse for Millennium. Yep. Pepperino took out Horo before the Dragon went down, so it was an easy uh, steal away by Frederick. And from that, Giants are actually going to start pushing from this, and they're going to get maybe another turret here. We know how fast Jinx clears, but what clears even faster is an equalizer from Rumble. But the fact that soft cooldown meant that Millennium did not want to commit to that fight. Yeah, that was just perfect play. X Peppy. Uh, 4-0 and 1 now. So much damage coming in. Had the Morella Nomicon as his first item. Well on his way to his death cap as well. Must have a lot of gold to play with following that kill onto Haro. In fact, he does have uh, 1,300, so enough to finish off his death cap. And he's not the only one that's going to be picking up a big item. Infinity Edge should be about to be completed. Oh, but they caught Haro oh, again. Flash into Counter-Strike. Haro is not having a good game. 1-4 and 2. Four out of five kills, 80% of his team deaths are on the jungler. And that is not a good spot to be in if you are Haro. And looks like Ryu might be a little bit caught out here. He's going to run into Pepperino. He will have to flash away from the charm. And Ryu does indeed use his own ultimate right of the arcane. Won't be killing him, but that's all three. Drops him very low, however. Did way more damage, but Adri with the rocket. Yes, it was enough. Snipes him from across the map. Giants again just using these global ultimates to their advantage, and now they push down the middle lane. Millennium are on the back foot again in this series, and Giants may be looking to get another turret. That was such a confident play, though, with pinpoint accuracy saying, you know what, let's chain our ultimate and hit him literally as he's running away and lead him where they actually didn't have vision. He was running into the jungle, and at that point, they didn't have vision over him. Great, great ultimate out of Adri. He is uh, making this Jinx work for him quite well in this game. A lot better this game than I think last game yeah. ended up going for him, because Creighton ended last game huge. Saying that, Creighton hasn't died yet. He has got his Trinity Force, BF Sword, and Sorcerer Shoes as well. So, the question is, how does Creighton get himself into this game? Because he could do with a couple more on the board. Yes, he could. But he's still in good shape, however. So, it will be the next blue buff being taken away here by Ryu. Just going around the housekeeping things, just to keep themselves going in this game. 23 minutes into the game. A lot of kills have gone down, but not as bloodthirsty and not as um, driven are the teams as last game. They seem to be just wavering a little bit. Yes, there's a lot on the line, 
Millennium want to clear out this series and make sure they progress onto the offline round. Whereas Giants are playing a little bit more conservatively. Ryu comes in, flashes out of the way of the shocking orb, and Pepe gets taken down, shut down by Ryu. Great charm out by Ryu. It looked like Pepperino had juked it, but predicted the juke and manages to get the kill. Really nice. That's the flashes of brilliance we expect to see a lot from Ryu. Be it in Challenger or be it in LCS, you have to feel Millennium will uh, put a lot of their next season on that player. They will. 2-2-1 uh, two, two and one currently. Maybe not the most impressive scoreline, but that was a very impressive last play. Creatin in the bottom lane. Looks like the rest of the team will assist him in knocking down this bottom turret evening up the turret total in this game and evening up the goal total as well. Literally nothing in it. It just comes down to player decisions and how they execute this game and how Whirly B may be caught out by Ryu. The charm comes out but not quite enough damage without his ultimate. Whirly B is not opting for the Blade of the Rune King next and that may be a big mistake. I mean that is Jack's core build through and through. It was almost an item made for Jax. It's sustain, attack, speed, attack damage. And an active to make sure you can get away from anybody that starts chasing you. Spirit Visage is getting built because he doesn't want... Or, yeah, he doesn't want Ryu actually to, to catch him out here, but he needs extra attack speed for this late game. He does. Maybe he's saying, okay, I'll get it. Third item. I'll just delay the game. But then that's saying to his team, we need to slow this all the way down yeah. so I can farm up and get to that point. However, Charm comes across, lands onto Frederick. He will be backing away. Spilings take the brunt of the damage from the Void Spikes. But these are continuous pick attempts from Millennium are starting to creep up onto Giants. And you throw another couple of those into the mix and they will not reach that late game for Jax. But he did just finish the Spirit Vigil, so now he's yeah. looking for that next item. So, the, the obvious reason that he's not going attack speed is because he's up against dual AP. I think right. that, that pretty much is, is out there <laughs> before you even take a look at the items. So, he has to build some kind of magic resist. But, the problem is Jax needs to pick up kills from these next couple of fights. And unless the rest of the team from Giants are dropping Millennium very low, which is in fact a possibility looking at Pepperino and Adri, is that enough for Jax to output the damage in these fights? That is a question that Millennium are going to have to uh, show us the answer to because Whirly B, if he gets to the late game, is going to be a monster. He will. That is no doubt. There is no question he will. But that's in the late game. The question is, can he get to that stage? Pepperino, though, is carrying them through the early game for one and two. Big kill participation. And again, Frederick did spend a fair amount of time in middle lane before the 10 minute mark, which is his plan of attack every single game. His declaration of intent is always going to be so. But the teleport did come in by Rumble. Kevin coming in from the top side. Frederick looking for the, uh, for the pick here, the flash into the death sentence from Rydal doesn't quite connect, and that's a flash down as the dragon fight will start being the next fighting point for these teams. That is a big cooldown to use. And that's, that was kind of a 50-50 play as well. Like That wasn't exactly uh, going to hit every time you do that. So in, interesting play there by Giants, but Ryu... Counter-Strike flash onto Ryu, uses the, the ultimate here, the Spirit Rush, oh. but gets nailed by X Pepe. In the mid lane, though, it is all erupting as he will be taken down as he's pinned in place from his own ultimate. Adri will be falling here, a two for two. This is becoming very messy as Willy B goes one on three. Here comes the rest of his team, but he's lasting for a long time before Creatin takes him down, make that the triple kill. Kevin now following up. Do they have the CC to keep him in place? And Frederick actually decides against taking the Fresh Express, but it doesn't seem like he's going to get pinned down regardless. 3-4-2 overall for Millennium. So much was used by, uh, by Giants to try and get onto Ryu there that they drew so many people out from the fight. And Millennium just take the man advantage on that, take a turret and back away. Yeah, and now they'll, uh, they'll look towards Dragon as well. Here comes the sweeper from Jerry, clears out the vision, and they'll be trying to take this one away. But Rydal is now coming in with the jungler of Frederick. Yeah, and Frederick is the key difference here between these two. He has his smite available, and Horo is only en route now. Teleport is coming in from Whirly B. Millennium have to disengage. Looking for the sandwich. An instant bubble comes out. We'll be taking the lantern here. In comes the death sentence again. Does not connect. 
those need to find its mark as the next couple will come out before that pick really pays off for them. Remember, this was their very first pick coming into the champion select. So far, I can't say it's paid off for them. Hasn't so much. Ooh, Rydal was uh, looking for that hook. But now Giants are going to start the Dragon again. This could be dangerous. Oh, Equalizer. Oh, the health bar is plummeting, but so is Giants. And Frederick has been caught out here, but there is another great lantern. So while the hooks haven't been paying off, the Dark Passages have. They have, but Giants have held this game fairly even. And Millennium right now are having to back away. Giants may look to rush. Oh, X Pepe dropping low here from the combo from Ryu but will not be taken out. Here comes the ultimate, the right of the arcane. Dancing shoes, Ryu comes out on top and will be recalling. Here comes the rocket and uh, flies off the map. Yeah, didn't hit the mark, but what did hit the mark was Whirly B got another turret during that uh, little skirmish. So every time we're starting to maybe look to count giants out or at least down, Giants and oh, they're following up. Ah, uh, Jinx has been caught out here. Whirly B tried to take away the red buff, but here comes Otano Wave and will catch up with you eventually. Can't outrun the wave, can't outrun the Creatin. Picked up another kill. Yeah, that's uh, another nice kill. And Creatin got the red buff from that, didn't he? With a, a rocket right at the beginning of that. But honestly, Millennium are firing back. This is just blow for blow right now mm -hmm. between these two teams. Every time you think one team is on the back foot, the other comes back into it. And I think that is a lot of a, a lot of credit go to Giants on this one. Because coming into this, everybody had written them off. But they are doing a great job of at least contending with Millennium. We've seen them have a lead before. They couldn't quite convert it into a game win in the last game. But can they do it here? Can they overcome the supposed Korean imports that were going to bring Millennium back to the LCS? Yeah, Millennium on paper. No doubt people see them as the favorites to come out on top in the EU LCS expansion tournament, but Giants are making a good sharing in this game. Again, the goal totals are even, same from the first game. Oh, here comes the right of the arcane again. Happy feet, yeah, gets away from it for, with the spirit rush. We'll be taking away the white, the wraiths as well. Again, the rocket doesn't hit. That combination is deadly right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's worked twice and failed about twice. So yeah. honestly, 50-50 on that, I think they'll take. Uh, because every time they do that, it's delaying Millennium because Ryu is such a big part of this. They're running uh, kind of a, a, a pick phase again. And as you smile at me, you know exactly what was coming. <laughs> Millennium are relying on picks. Yeah. And it, it's just a problem that they're having right now. Every time they get deterred from that, Giants manage to find themselves that little bit of a lead every single time. We know you're tired of hearing it, but it, it <laughs> continues to be true. It does. I mean, <laughs> it, it is the truth about Millennium yep. during the LCS, but they are, I, I mean, it does work for them sometimes. Yep. 50% of the time, it works 100% of the time. I mean, it's. I guess it's just surprising that their play style hasn't changed since, you know, crashing out of the LCS because I don't yep. think there's any way to put it. When you have the choice of your challenger team to go against and you pick a team that make it past you, that is uh, a real big statement that something is wrong in the Millennium Camp. And again, here comes the ultimate. Oh, oh! Ryu is not the dodgeball champion of 2014 and neither is Kevin. Gets caught up by the cocoon, follows through with the tidal wave for the disengage coming in from Jerry. Again, the rocket goes awry, but a one for zero. Can Giants take anything off the back of this? At this point, they should focus one of the objectives that are open for them. Could it be a turret? Could it be Baron? Looks like they're going to turn out for Baron. They will turn around, but Haro is alive and kicking. He may have something to say about them rushing down this Baron. Plus, they have the vision over this as everyone walks past this pink ward in that bush. Millennium will try and do something about this. Key ultimates are not available, though. R uh, Rumble's equalizer, and of course, the tidal wave is not there either. So it's on Giants to deter the push. Rydal takes some hits. Creason from around the side does get hooked, however. That will be X Pepe uh, confirming the Baron for his team. The shutdown onto Creason. A kill, and will be following up. Does get excited. Moves on to Horro. Looking for it? this next kill. It is getting slowed down by the Void Spikes, Zap? though. Zap comes through. Gets dodged by Horro and continues to back off. Another Void Spikes should be 
be good to go, but Ryder from the side comes in with a fresh express, but doesn't get him in range for the kill. Still, a one for zero plus the dragon on Creator, no less. Yeah, with that Baron as well, Giants are now going to take down an inhibitor and an inhibitor turret from this, and Millennium are floundering again. And at this point, that's a lot that's fallen. 10 seconds left on Create, and I don't know whether Giants can actually push for this because ultimates are back available here. This, this is risky with the Equalizer coming in here from Kevin. He just needs to decide when and where to use it. Jerry comes in here. They are waiting for the right opportunity. But that's the second Nexus turret falling. Whirly B takes down the support. Down goes the fish. Horror looking to follow up. Ryu will be able to dodge the way out of the death sentence. Now they turn around onto Giants. Whirly B drops low, will be taken out. Super Mega Death Rocket slams through to Creaton, and he will not be taken down. Pick up another kill, a two for one. They repelled him from the base, but that's an exposed Nexus. It is both Nexus turrets fell, but Giants overstayed a little bit. I feel like they could have taken one and backed away and still had the Baron buff to regen them for the next push, but Millennium hold for now but it's a good lead for Giants, and they've got Whirly B well and truly into this game. He's going full tank mode now, frozen hard, actually, as an item is uh, not the best item against double AP, but obviously wants to slow down Creighton because once again, Creighton, seven, one, and two. Creighton is having a great game, but is it enough to hold Millennium in the game? Because Dragon has spawned, Inhibitor is down in the middle lane, and the Nexus is exposed. Yeah, a stray Jax back during your Nexus is a very real yes, possibility in is. this game. His teleport's available too. They didn't yeah. get a ward down before they died though, and it, or if they did, it was cleared out. Yeah, and in fact, they do not have a whole lot of vision in this game. It was all systems go, and not a lot was heading towards that vision. Also interesting to note, Zach's Pepe, uh, as of a long time ago, in fact, his transition was not over to a red trinket, it was over to the blue trinket. Kevin, <laughs> risky, just managed to get back to base, but has that extra blue trinket just to save his own neck if he needs it in a pinch. Millennium pushed out for Dragon, and there's a lot of people not up in that top lane. Giants do not know this yet. And that is uh, a little bit of a problem, but Ryu just showed in the bottom lane, Giants have all systems go in this top lane. And with an inhibitor pushing as well, Ryu has to recall. I'm very surprised that he actually showed himself. Yeah, and now they have to try and draw the line here at this inhibitor turret. As Giants are sieging this down, who better to do that than Pepe with his Zera pick. Now 6-2-3 and three in a very good position with his items. Millennium holding the fort though, and Ryu gets detonated by Pepe by himself. That was just a full combo. Is that enough? Surely they can push in here. They need an equalizer. Oh, there's the equalizer, but as you said, is that enough? Whirly B comes in. That's the turret going down. This is so back and forth. Haro is stealthed up, but Whirly B is on the hunt. Here comes the ultimate. Takes down two, takes down three, takes down four. Four for zero. This surely is the game with the exposed Nexus. Andre is already on the case. Creatin goes down. Five for zero is clean as you want. 17 to 12. That is Giants evening up the scoreboard in this best of three. And I would not be surprised to hear a lot of people uh, completely question just how good Giants could be at this point. Because that was a fantastic game from them. They were behind in the beginning. And then Pepperino really just put on his carry pants. Yeah, that was an insane couple of minutes to end the game. It was even, it was even, it was even, and the Giants just win. It was just all off the back of that Baron play and absolutely insane. Extremely well played by Giants. And that was the instant iteration that they needed to do from the first game. Didn't work out. They were even throughout the game. And then in the second game, it's like, okay, from this point, now we make the transition and then they just drove it home. Just perfect. Yeah, I mean, it was very good from Giants. We didn't even see their full composition because Whirly B picked Jax. We questioned coming into it, how against Rumble is that going to go? Went pretty well fine enough for him, 4-2-3 and three in that game. Didn't even get to the point, though, that we were seeing Jax assassinate people as fast as possible. Didn't even need it. Yeah, and you have to almost feel like that was the uh, ripple effect from that initial flash being taken away by Ryu yeah. at the very start of the game. It just all went the way of Pepe. And we know their team composition is centered around him. That's how their whole composition works. Get that just small advantage and he will take an inch and go the mile. He will indeed. And Ryu, two, five, and three in that game. Did not seem settled 
The same could be said for Horror 1, 6, and 6. So it looks like Millennium yeah. potentially are struggling with uh, Giant's game plan here of focusing on jungle mid lane synergy. All right, well, we will see the conclusion to this best of three as we head into our final game.